Welcome to Knowledgeable Aging. I'm your host, Jason Kotar. Joining us today to talk about setting up your computer for comfort at home is Carissa Sims. Carissa is an author, speaker, and corporate ergonomics consultant. As an ergonomist and occupational therapist working in the field of injury prevention, Carissa has been running ergonomics programs for the past 10 years. She has her own company and has worked with many Fortune 500 companies like Google, Amazon, NBC, CBS, Fox, and Symantec. Thank you for joining me today, Carissa. How are you? Oh, Jason, I'm so happy to be here. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be on your program and to be a part of your mission of knowledgeable aging. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Uh, real quick, for those that are joining us today, if you have any questions, Go ahead and type those into the box, and time permitting at the end, we will get um, those questions answered. So, Carissa, setting up your computer for comfort at home. Yes, yes. I wanted to help people that are working from home and just give them some tips. I've worked from home myself for a while, and I've also worked with different populations. I've worked in a hospital setting, and I've worked as an occupational therapist, working with stroke patients, people with injuries, such as carpal tunnel and a hand therapy clinic. So I also have a little bit of a medical background. So I've seen some injuries, and they are happening younger and younger because I think people are working on a computer now from when they're in preschool and even uh, when they're older and out of college and maybe they're going back to school or they might have different reasons for working from home on the computer. So what is ergonomics? Um, so ergonomics is a study and design of work and equipment in relation to the physiological and psychological capabilities of people. So basically, it's your interaction with the computer. It's your posture. How are you sitting? What is your equipment? Do you have the right chair? Are you in the right position for your monitor? Because your vision drives your posture, so you have to think about what position is my monitor in? Is it slightly lower than the top of my head? Do I maybe need an external monitor? Or maybe I need to reposition my hands. If you're reaching up, that's your relation to the equipment. And there's also a piece where you hold stress. So sometimes people hold stress in their muscles, and they hold stress in their lower back. They might hold stress in their shoulders or their neck. So you have to work that out in some way. So taking micro breaks every 20 minutes can help with that, not only with your muscles, but with your eyes as well. So I've been working a lot since the coronavirus. I've been working with people in their homes and it's been a challenge. I mean, people who maybe are not used to working from home have now all of a sudden had to work from home. And they don't have the proper chair. They're sitting on the floor or they're sitting on their beds or laying on their beds. So there's, there's a lot of chaos right now of people transitioning from corporate to the home environment. And also sometimes people getting laid off, maybe they're searching for jobs, or they're doing freelance. So whatever it is, a lot more people are working from home. So now I just wanted to talk about some of the early warning signs of overuse or injuries. And it can definitely be a progression. Maybe it can start as a little aching or muscle soreness or fatigue. You might be dropping things. Your symptoms could interrupt your sleep. Maybe it's connected to another injury. You could have a sluggish or weak muscle or joint so that you could have a pre-existing condition. So those are some of the warning signs you need to pay attention to and maybe start making some changes to your habits. Maybe start exercising more, start stretching, start taking micro breaks and changing your office setup. So let's talk about 
proper workstation setup. A neutral posture it, when you're seated is with your ears, shoulders, and hips in alignment. Now, in the home office, there are so many different environments, right? You have the couch, you might have the kitchen counter, you might have the dining table, you might have your kids' office and, and their desk, or maybe you're working on, uh, have a standing workstation set up on the high chair. So I've seen it all. I mean, people are just doing whatever it takes to be in the right position. But it's really important to keep that neutral posture to really keep those shoulders, ears, and hips in alignment, no matter what position you are, even when, when you're standing, too. So for your upper extremity, you want the wrist to be positioned about one inch lower than elbow height with your shoulders relaxed. And sometimes that's not possible, so at least even. And if you can't get that position, you might need a footrest to raise your chair all the way. And if your chair doesn't raise, you may need to get a chair that adjusts at least in height. And if it doesn't support your back properly, you could use a bed pillow, a firm bed pillow from home, or they have ergonomic pillows that can fit in the curve of your lower spine. And that would be really helpful. And, and also a cushion for your buttocks. A lot of people are sitting in old office chairs and they have diminished foam support. So sitting in something can help alleviate that back pain and just take pressure off of the legs. If your seat is too long for you, it's really important to get a pillow to push you forward. So if, if you're looking at the right measurement for your seat, you want to make sure that you have about two to three fingers space between the back of your knee and the edge of the seat pan. And hopefully it's a, a waterfall edge for the seat. And for your chair, you definitely want to have your armrests adjusted low enough where you can scoot in close to your keyboard and mouse. I always recommend using an external keyboard and mouse because it's easier to position your laptop properly and then use the other input devices. I, I don't know if you can see me, but I have um, a vertical mouse that I use on the left, and that takes a lot of pressure off of the, the wrists. And then I also have a contour um, mouse. This is just one product that can minimize reaching for the shoulders. So um, let me just go back here. You don't necessarily have to have an ergonomic keyboard or an ergonomic mouse. I just happen to have them because I like the way they feel. If you don't have, let your discomfort be your guide. If you don't have any pain in your wrist or your shoulders or your upper extremity, maybe you don't need an ergonomic keyboard. But there are many keyboards that can serve the same effect. Like if you have a Mac, you might just want a Mac long keyboard or a Mac short keyboard with a magic mouse. Or if you have a PC, then you can use a Dell keyboard. Just make sure a lot of the newer keyboards have that hard plastic edge. That is awful for you. You definitely want to remove that. That's why some of the ergonomic keyboards may be a little bit better, like the Microsoft Sculpt keyboard. That has a built-in pad that is better for your hands than um, the hard edge or resting on your desktop. So there's also just a keyboard with slanted keys, like the Kensington keyboard, that is supposed to put you in a more neutral position where your hands are more out and wider. But I really like the Microsoft Sculpt for just a generic keyboard, but there's also a Gold Touch adjustable and a Kinesis adjustable where the whole keyboard separates. So I, you know, don't get too caught up on the product. The most important thing is to have a neutral posture for your wrist, your shoulders, your upper extremity. 
And then also to take breaks. So when you change your position or stand occasionally and take a micro break every 20 minutes, it doesn't have to be a long break. It could be one minute. It could be uh, a second. You know, some people say, oh, I don't have time to take breaks. But I just say, okay, how about one second? And they can't really argue with that. So, or I call it something else. I say, it's a pause, you know, interrupt your workflow and your, and your day. Because a, a break might mean to someone relaxing or taking a nap or going to the kitchen to get something to eat, you know. They were talking about the, the Corona 15, people gaining weight and going to the kitchen a lot. So you don't have to do that necessarily, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> go go eat you know you can drink some water do something healthy you can do some exercises or stretch so that's just something to consider when you're working especially from home because it's hard to get in the perfect position from home so I do think it's important to have an adjustable chair at home and really invest the money they they do have some low cost chair solutions off of Office Depot or Staples. The Han chair is an okay one that is readily available. I'm kind of a snob when it comes to chairs. I'm really picky about chairs. So most of what they carry at Staples or Office Depot are awful. And and you do have to spend, I would say, at least 300 350 to get the proper adjustments and the proper padding. If you have a cheaper chair, it's not the end of the world. They do have really good pillows, um, but I would invest the money to spend a little bit more, you know, $70 to $100 for a back pillow rather than the $20 models. For the seat pans, that's, you know, they're inexpensive, so that's fine. You can buy a cheaper seat pan. But that, that could help if you're using a dining room chair or if you just don't have the money to get a new chair. Now, the interesting thing, we're going into workstation adjustment now. The interesting thing about products is sit-stand workstations have really come down in price. I mean, you can get a great electric sit-stand for a couple hundred dollars, and that didn't used to be the case. So people sometimes have a mental block and think that this furniture is really expensive. Yes, I mean, of course, $200, $300 is expensive. But you don't necessarily have to spend $1,000 to get a good workstation set up. I would say you can get some something for $600 everything, you know, with a laptop riser and an external keyboard, mouse. If you already have a desk, most people already have a desk, you can work around that and, and just get a good chair or sometimes maybe just work in the kitchen and stand, bring your laptop and stand uh, and put your laptop on something a little bit higher. But anyway, they have so many sit-stand converters now. Oh my gosh, it's just rampant. I mean, standing is like the new rage for ergonomics and everybody's jumping on that bandwagon. So I think they had a slogan, sitting is the new smoking, like it's so bad for you. <laughs> And I, I'm not that extreme, you know, I, that's pretty extreme to me, you know, I, I'm not a smoker, so I, maybe I'm biased, um, but I, I do believe that sitting is okay if your back is supported, it's a great way to rest your body and take the pressure off your back. You know, people that stand all day, they just want to sit, you know, people who work in a grocery store environment or healthcare workers they are always standing and it's fatiguing to stand all day and it's not necessarily the greatest for your body either being dynamic is though moving is the key so sometimes when you're standing it can be easier to be dynamic you kind of naturally move a little bit rotate maybe you rotate your hips you move your feet or if you have a foot rest you can use that and alternate your feet, and that can be really helpful. Kind of like when they have at a restaurant or a bar, they have that bar at the bottom. That's for your feet. That's so you can stand all day and drink, right? So, so anyway, 
that's just an example of uh, a bar integrating ergonomics so that they can have people there standing. Anyway, workstation adjustment is important. You can, if your desk is too high and you're unable to get a neutral posture for your extremities, then what you can do is you can raise your chair all the way up and use a footrest. And they also have very inexpensive, since I'm doing a lot of these home office evaluations, they have very inexpensive, no installation required keyboard trays. And that can just slide onto your desk and, and you can just do a search, you know, on wherever you like to order products. Amazon, Office Depot, Staples, and just click no install. I think 3M has a model, and it's a, a great solution if you're having some upper extremity issues and you're just reaching up too high and you can't get that chair adjusted to the proper position. That's a good solution for home to get you adjusted properly. And a lot of the sit stand, the electric sit stands or the converters, they have converters that sit on top and they're, they're bi-level. Um, they're, like I said, they're a few hundred dollars, so it's, it's not much of an investment. But the converter sometimes will put your keyboard higher and put you in a worse position for seated. So it's like great for standing, but when you're seated, then it's awkward and you're reaching up even higher than you were before. And sometimes you can alleviate that like I said before, by just raising your chair, using the keyboard, then that's fine. But a lot of times it puts you in a worse position. So I caution people, if you're going to get a converter, make sure you get one that goes under the desk. They do have some, like Ergotron TX or the WorkFit S. They have ones that attach to the front of the desk, and then they have the keyboard tray that goes below the desk. And they're a little bit more expensive, but I think your body is worth it. So I'll talk a little bit about desktop organization. Basically, you just want to keep things within an easy reach, within a near reach. So for example, your mouse and your keyboard, you want to keep that within a, a near reach zone. If, you know, back in the old days when people use phones, gosh, I, I work with so many tech companies and no one uses the phone anymore, except for their cell phone, of course. So yeah, if you're going to use your cell phone, keep that close. The desktop phone, if you're using that, you know, you want maybe want to have a headset. See, now I'm wearing a headset. I don't know how attractive it looks, but um, there are wireless ones that are a little bit more hidden. So think about what are you doing throughout the day? Are you referencing documents? Do you need to have documents close to you in alignment with your monitor? Uh, are you reaching for things excessively on your desk? So, that, so that's the, what I mean by organization. Where is your monitor position? Is it arm's length distance away or 18 to 30 inches? Is is it slightly lower than the top of your head? So really think about that positioning. And a lot of people position the monitor off to the side and, and get a little bit awkward. They get a little bit twisted. So it's really important for your monitor be, to be centered and at the right height. You don't necessarily need a headset or document holders unless, I would say if you're referencing documents more than an hour a day, then yes, you would need a document holder. Um, Sometimes people laugh at me when I say, do you use paper? Paper, no. I use another monitor. They use two monitors. So headsets, uh, they do have a lot of different headsets for the PC and your phone. So it's just to avoid cradling. You don't want to be going like this. And then that's not good for... Um, also, it's not good for your brain, too. I've heard, actually, when the cell phone. Um, to hold it that close. So let's talk a little bit about the results of poor posture. So everybody, if you, if you don't have an injury, get into this position and feel yourself slouching, really exaggerate, okay? So what happens in this poor posture, and then go ahead and relax and just get neutral, is you have increased muscle tendon forces, restricted blood flow, limited available strength, and it can cause a compression of the nerves, especially the nerve bundle right here. 
when I was talking about the early warning signs of ergonomic injuries. This right here, if you're slouching like this, could cause thoracic outlet syndrome. It could press on the nerve, the median nerve or the ulnar nerve, and cause cubital tunnel is the ulnar nerve, and no one really talks about that, but sometimes people do have those symptoms. Um, but sometimes it, people who have cubital tunnel, they're just diagnosed with tendonitis because they see it inflamed here, but it could all be connected, right? So it starts off in the muscles, then it goes to the tendons, and then it can start to press on the nerve. So that's some of the results of the poor posture, and that can be from seated or standing. And some of the reasons could be it's not the right job, things aren't within an easy reach, or it's just people have bad posture most of the time. That's true. And something to um, correct your posture is to just roll the shoulders back, kind of pinch the shoulder blades together, and then place your arms out to the side. So the palms are facing up and the shoulders are down. It can counteract this movement here. Because if you're here, try to lift your arms. Okay, and now try to be in a good posture. Ear shoulders, hips in alignment, now lift. Can you see how it might affect your range of motion? And this is just to give you a visual of what we already talked about, neutral postures. Is, is anyone in this position? I... It's hard to find people in this position because most of the time people are not aware of the position that they need to be, that their shoulders should be relaxed, that their wrists are slightly lower than the elbows. So back in the day when people are writing, then you wanted to have the desk a little bit higher than the keyboard height, but that's maybe not happening as much anymore. If you have a laptop, which I find a lot of people have a laptop, it's good to have a riser. You can see this is not a home office. This is an actual office. But sometimes people have laptops in the regular office too. And so what we did was we did an ergonomic keyboard and mouse with a laptop riser and we're able to get it at the right height. Now a lot of times, if people have the option to use an external monitor, I say go for it because it's so much better for your eyes and you're not having to lean in to see. So really pay attention to your posture. If, if you're leaning in and have like this jutting of the neck forward, then you may need to move things closer or get an external monitor. So, and it's better to not use the keyboard and the touchpad on the monitor because there's on the laptop because there's always that hard edge there. And well, back in the day when people were carrying the laptops, it, it did put a lot of extra pressure on your back. But if you're just working from home, then you don't have to worry about that too much. And laptops are a lot uh, lighter now. Jason, I just wanted to stop for a minute. Are, are we doing okay on time? How, what time are we going to? Well, we got another 10 minutes. Uh, we've got a few questions that have already kind of come in, so uh, we want to leave a little bit of time okay, for those, great. but go ahead. Oh, okay, great. I just wanted to make sure we didn't have to end at, um, on, the, on the dot, 30, 1230 on the dot. Okay, so these are just some tips for um, what not to do, okay? And if you're having glare, you want to position the monitor perpendicular to the window, maybe close the blinds, and try to avoid the fluorescent lighting directly above your head. So, um, so some other things that you might want to, oops, oh look, it went out of, sorry, I was trying to minimize this. Oh, you fixed it. I don't know what happened. Okay, Perfect. great. So try not to create a reach by separating the um, keyboard and mouse. So support, don't support the hand by resting on a pad. Rest the palm, not the wrist. So I know a lot of people think you're supposed to rest the wrist on the wrist rest, but ideally you want to rest the fatty part of your palm, and that's in between keystrokes. 
So you're typing, kind of type like you're using or playing the piano, and then uh, occasionally you can rest your palms on the wrist rest, okay? So try not to twist your body while on the computer. Avoid uh, arm rests that are too high that are causing your shoulders to hunch, and don't cradle the phone. So, and don't work in pain. Hopefully you can take a break while you're at home, so it might be easier to take a break. I'm not sure. Sometimes people are in back-to-back -back meetings, so it can be a challenge. So we talked about what to do previously. Position the monitor, fingertips length distance. Uh, position the keyboard in alignment with the monitor so the body doesn't twist. Use a document holder if you're referencing printed materials and vary your tasks, and then share what you've learned with others so you can help them, you know. Um, so some ways to be proactive, rearrange your workstation. I would say, for me, I feel like it's okay to work on the couch, but I would prefer if you had a lap desk where you had an external mouse and you can place the laptop on your lap on a platform so it doesn't overheat and then tilt the screen all the way back and just try to move your eyes when you're using it. And then that can be something you maybe do for an hour or you can switch back and forth. So maybe you're standing in the kitchen at the high kitchen counter. I had some people using a bookshelf and then change to the couch and make sure your back is supported. So you want to sit all the way back and get a pillow right in the lumbar area, and it's easier to be in a neutral posture for your shoulders and your wrists, you'll see, when you once you get into that position. And the lap desks are not that expensive. I was looking at one for um, somebody working from home the other day, and it was about $30, and it was great. It had a cushion underneath, but it also allowed the laptop to breathe. It gave it some air uh, with a hard platform. So something else you could do, and you could use keystroke shortcuts instead of using the mouse. And it's great to stretch, exercise, and relax and allow your body to heal. So stretching can be done. Obviously, if you're injured, you want to make sure you get those stretches approved from your doctor or your physical therapist, chiropractor, whoever you're seeing. But Stretches in general, if you can do yoga or exercise at least 20 to 60 minutes a day and stretch those muscles after, that's the most effective. Or wait until those muscles are warm because you can overstretch. You can actually hurt yourself. People say, oh, I need to stretch more. But maybe not necessarily. Maybe you need a massage and to break up that muscle tissue first and then stretch it out or you need to walk around the block first and do like a five to six minute warm up, and then you can stretch those muscles. Or they also have heating pads. Heat is good for increasing blood flow and circulation, and the ice is good for uh, decreasing pain. I also, in college, I worked with the athletes. I was an athletic trainer. I worked in football and um, cross country, and I treated all the athletes. So, um, so I always remember rice, rest, ice, compression, elevation. That's what you do when you first get injured in the first, you know, uh, 24 uh, hours to two days. That's important. And then after that, then you can get into the heat. You never want to apply heat, but uh, initially for an injury. But if it's a cumulative trauma disorder, something that you've got from working from home or working on your computer, then that's okay. All right, so now I think Jason might have some yeah. questions yeah. there that we can talk, talk to. Yes. Um, Yes, we've got about four or five questions here. First one is, do you have any suggestions for the aging people using their computers? For those well, that are I a little think, bit older. I think one, one question, that's a good question. I think one thing to keep in mind is your eyes. So uh, taking those breaks 
can be really helpful or they have different glasses like blue light glasses that can help with the glare and um, and the light coming in you can also increase the size of the font significantly in your computer and that will help you not lean in as much or you might need to get computer glasses so they have progressives where you can see the computer out of the middle of the screen and then the reading is at the bottom and if you get specific computer glasses it's just a single screen that you look at the computer and it can help with uh, any vision issues and it's really important to have the monitor at the right height to minimize that that slouching and and reaching forward now, I know you already touched on this, but we did have a question. Uh, do you recommend standing desk? Do you recommend it? I know that's, you said that's the new, the new thing, but do you recommend it? Yeah. I mean, I think it's great for people that are going to use it. If they really feel like they're going to stand part of the day, then it's fine. You know, I work with a lot of different companies, and they, some of them have sit-stands as a standard, and sometimes I see maybe about 10% of them being used for standing. So you have to really think about yourself. If you get tired, maybe you just need to stand more or move the laptop somewhere else to stand part of the day. I, I think you don't necessarily need a standing desk unless you're just gung-ho and like, okay, I'm going to work towards standing most of the day. Because when you get a standing desk, you don't want to stand all day with it. And some people don't realize that. And they're like, oh, I'm having back pain. It hurts more. Or I'm tired. It's fatiguing. And it is more fatiguing. So you have to think about standing like working out. So you only want to increase it about 10% a week. Um, this is an interesting question. I work on the couch a lot. Any tips for that? Well, you have to really pay attention to your leg position. So okay. sometimes people like to cross their legs or be um, out of, you know, they put one leg off to the side or they're laying down on their back or um, are on their stomach. So, so think about your positioning, I think, and if your couch is too low. So it might not be a good solution for you if, your hips are lower than your knees. So if you get into that bucket seat position, like a lot of cars are designed like that, if you get into that position, you really want to sit on a pillow to put your hips up higher than your knees, and then make sure your lower back is supported. And then also make sure it's not compressing the back of your knees and the edge of the seat pan. So that's important as well. And then when you're using the laptop, we did touch on this, um, but I'll just say it again. Make sure the screen is tilted all the way back so that you're moving more of your eyes and not slouching down all the way. And then bring the laptop to your lap so you can use the keyboard. I wouldn't recommend an external keyboard in this case, but an external mouse can be helpful. And a lot of the lap desks have that space for the external mouse. Uh, last question. You already kind of touched on this, Carissa. What about eye strain? What can you do about eye strain? There is so much you can do about eye strain. You know what happens when you look at a computer is that your blink rate decreases significantly. And if you start paying attention to it, you'll realize that you're just staring at the computer and your eyes don't get as much lubrication, actually. So you can just close your eyes. You can increase your blink rate, like start blinking more, and that can increase the lubrication and eye strain. And also something that helps is looking away from your monitor. We talked about breaks, but every 20 minutes, looking at an object that's at least 10 feet away, maybe looking outside, and that can help your eyes refocus. It's called accommodation. It can help refocus at a different object because why the computer is so straining and not like a piece of paper is that what's happening is all of these dots are coming together 
to form the letters, and your eyes have to make that happen. So that's why it's more straining. Also with the glare and the light and, every, and reflections and everything else, that can be minimized by glare screens or um, different glasses that have the, the glare prevention on it. And then um, sometimes even just taking a break looking away. Oh, and they also, I also wanted to mention there are eye exercises you can do. So you can actually look up, down, to the side, go in a circle, and you can look these up on online for um, different eye exercises you can do. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, Carissa. Lots of, uh, lots of information to, uh, to take in. How can people find you? Yeah, they can reach out to me, Carissa, C-H-A-R-I-S-S-A, -S -S at ergolution, E-R-G-O-L-U-T-I-O-N dot net, and my website, ergolution dot net, and I also have a podcast called You Inspired on iTunes. Okay. Cool. Once again, Carissa, thank you so much for your time. Um, till we see you next time, my name is Jason Kotar, and this is Knowledgeable Aging.